Hey there, everybody. Today we're going to take a drive out to Pecos. So come along for the ride. Before I hit the road, I thought I'd just take a look at my coolant level here. And uh, I'm glad I did because it's a little low. Uh, but not much to worry about. I do have coolant in the truck in case I need it. So I'm not really worried. And I think that's probably enough anyway. So I just have to remember to add coolant when I get back. Because I moved around a lot as a child, um, we were always traveling. A lot of you know, the, the sequence of events is kind of fuzzy in my mind. But I remember very clearly the very first time that I went out to Pecos. Uh, I had been living with my dad in Los Angeles for, I don't know, six months, maybe a year, or something like that, in an apartment in uh, the San Fernando Valley somewhere. And uh, I remember... I don't remember the airplane trip much, uh, but I do remember uh, mom picking me up at the airport or I assume it was the airport in Albuquerque uh, and then uh, driving me to Pecos. And uh, I remember because we were, I remember the vehicle. We were like in an old Volkswagen bus. And uh, I remember as we got out kind of into the Pecos wilderness the first time I ever saw a skeleton and uh, you know we're driving uh, out to Holy Ghost Canyon is where we lived and uh, I'm looking out the windows at the wilderness around us and in this field I see these skeletons of uh, dead elk or deer uh, I assume Probably, I, I think as a child, uh, I assumed they were deer, and maybe my mother told me they were deer, uh, but uh, they were probably elk. And uh, so that image of those those skeletons kind of out in the field sort of got burned into my memory. And uh, then, uh, you know, the, of course, I, I have a lot of really clear memories of living there in Pecos as a child. Uh, I went to Pecos, uh, I went to kindergarten at Pecos Elementary. Uh, and uh, I, re I have a lot of memories of that. Uh, that's where I learned the Pledge of Allegiance. And, uh, you know, we, um, my first experience with a school environment, uh, so to speak. So anyway, uh, if we drive by Pecos Elementary, I'm going to get some photos. Uh, I'm going to take some uh, images of it. And uh, if we get to... Uh, uh, we're going to Holy Ghost Canyon, and I'm, uh, I don't know if the cabin that I lived in is still there or not. Uh, but if it is, then we're going to get some, some photos of that. So uh, I hope you'll stick with me. And as we come around this bend here, we get a view of Ro Mesa, which is a huge, enormous mesa uh, that goes along for miles and miles. Uh, borders one side of the Pecos Valley. Uh, <clears throat> so when, when we get kind of, we got to go through Glorietta Pass first, and then after we make it over Glorietta Pass, we come down into the Pecos Valley, and Ro Mesa will be on our right. It's a pretty steep climb uh, to the Glorietta Pass, and I've been, I've been over this in the wintertime when there was four, four feet of snow, five feet of snow, and snow plows give up and they just go home. And uh, it was crazy to be out there that night, but I was lucky that I, I must have been following the last plow because I, I never would have made it if I hadn't been. 
and this is the peak of the pass coming up here. It's all downhill after this little rise. It's a bad place to leave for Subaru. Alright, and now we are coming down into the Pecos Valley. There's Ro Mesa down ahead. Goes on for miles. Miles and miles. And we're driving right through the Glorietta Pass battlefield here. Uh, some consider it to be one of the decisive battles of the Civil War. Uh, the north and the south were trying to outflank each other going further and further west and uh, this this was I guess the westernmost battle that took place between those two opposing sides and if you walk around out here uh, you will see like bullet holes or uh, not holes exactly but marks on the rocks from bullets if you're lucky you might find uh, an old iron ball laying on the ground somewhere around here and now we're coming down into the village of Pecos beautiful view right here as we come down the hill and we're going towards Torero 63 I guess you could call this downtown Pecos right here this doesn't get any more urban than this. <clears throat> this is kind of the village of Pecos. Of course, when I was a kid, it wasn't nearly this populated or this developed. None of those houses that you see right there existed when I was a kid and this road was pretty you know except for the oldest buildings you see there were pretty much none somebody out there chopping weeds There was a general store, uh, of course, I remember that, uh, but where we lived, uh, you know, in Holy Ghost Canyon, there was none except for Torero, uh, and, you know, we were pretty much out in the middle of the deepest wilderness that my mom could find. I love these old buildings here again all that was here when I was a kid that there was no gas station out here even I remember at the Torero General Store my mom used to uh, get cigarettes there she used to buy cigarettes by the half a pack because the um, general store owner often didn't have enough supply for everyone he wasn't willing to to sell you a full pack of cigarettes it was that isolated and remote back then and especially in the winter time you know these roads pretty much impassable without chains on your tires there's the Benedictine Monastery. So we are following the Pecos River upstream uh, up the Pecos Valley here. And where we finally wind up is, uh, I mean, it's, it's deep. We're, we're going way up into the Pecos wilderness. 
Yes, this is part of the Santa Fe National Forest. I'm pretty sure we're still in San Miguel County. Because of all the wildfires uh, that we, we've had beginning in the late 90s, uh, there's not as much forest here as the, I mean, it's, you'll see a lot of places where there's fire damage and a lot of trees are lost. It's, it was a lot uh, more heavily forested, I guess is what I'm trying to say when I was a child back in the early 70s and uh, that's when I lived here. I think it was around 71 or 72 or 73. I'm not sure exactly. My memory is fuzzy. I, I know I went to kindergarten. I remember waiting for the bus. So, you know, I, I would have been around that age. I remember one summer my friend Teo and I wanted to uh, go fishing so we had our parents drop us off here uh, they dropped us off here on a Friday and uh, we camped all weekend and then they, they came out came back out and picked us up I think on late Sunday or maybe it was Monday uh, it was about 12 or 13 I think when Teo and I did that but uh, I think the campground that we stayed at would have been up here a little ways on the right back then there were no camping fees now you'd be lucky if you ever found a spot uh, I don't know I haven't camped out here in many years but the last time I did I remember it was really hard to find a spot and when I did I didn't enjoy it that much because it was so crowded there was so many people out here that uh, <clears throat> it just wasn't that much fun now I think uh, I don't know I mean I'm seeing a lot of cars considering we're in the middle of a pandemic you wouldn't I I wouldn't expect to see this many people out here. Especially not parked so close together. <laughs> All these pre people are probably just out here fishing. They're not camping or anything. They just came out for a day of fishing. Oh, and there's the chapel. Uh, pretty sure this is where Teo and I had our parents drop us off and where we came back to meet them at the end of the weekend on Sunday or whenever it was I remember we waited here to meet our, uh, our parents man were we ready to be picked up after a weekend of camping in the Pecos uh, it actually rained really hard on us and our camp got flooded and uh, we weren't very experienced campers so uh, we had a pretty rough go of it another thing I remember from that time uh, was seeing everywhere uh, trees that had been chewed on by beaver everywhere I mean that was like really significant memory I remember seeing you know there were beaver dams all over the place and uh, little beaver houses and uh, all the all the trees showed markings where the, the beaver had chewed on them and I remember remarking on that to my mom even though I was really, really young, and mom saying, yeah, that's beaver. I don't remember ever seeing a beaver. I just remember signs of them everywhere. And uh, you don't see that in Pecos anymore. I don't think there's any more beaver here. Check out these magnificent cliffs dead ahead. And you can see the fire damage, too, to the right of that. Uh, if the video is picking it up 
pretty spectacular wilderness here. Torero, four miles, Cowles, ten. We are getting deep, deep, deep into the Pecos wilderness, folks. Wow, look at these rocks. I hope they don't fall on the truck. All right, this is Holy Ghost Canyon. And this is where I lived when I went to kindergarten with my mom in a little cabin. No running water, no electricity, no gas. We stayed warm with firewood and mom cooked on a wood stove and we used kerosene for light. And if I wanted some oatmeal, mom would hand me the hatchet and she would hand me a bucket and I would take the hatchet and the bucket down to the river this river right here I guess you could call it the Holy Ghost River and I would fetch a pail of water for my mother and go back to uh, first I'd have to use the hatchet to break open uh, the ice on the river and uh, then I'd get use the pail to get a bucket of water and then I'd go back and give mom the bucket of water and she'd make me some some oatmeal this little road uh, uh, is the path I took. I walked down this road to catch the bus. Uh, and I'll show you where I waited for the bus uh, in a little bit. Uh, but first, let's go see if the cabin is still there. It should be up here on the left somewhere. So let's just drive up a little ways and look. I'd be really surprised if it was still there. There's some people hanging out by the river. There's a little chipmunk. Look out, little chipmunk. Oh, I wonder if this is actually the cabin that we lived in right here. I think it is. I'm just going to pull up to it. If it is, it looks like it's been rebuilt completely. Continuing up Holy Ghost Canyon, the new road. Well, I am totally amazed at how far back this goes. And as I look across the stream, I can see that indeed the old road did go up this far. And there were other cabins going way back up in here, much farther than I uh, previously thought. Uh, and I'm shocked at the number of them, and some of, you know, most of them are new, obviously, but some of them uh, are obviously older cabins that existed when I was a little kid. So I'm really surprised uh, to see all that. Oop, little squirrel running across the road suicidal little squirrel and uh, still going back and I'm gonna get some pictures of these uh, cabins 
on the way down just because some of them are really beautiful and you might want to see them and the road just keeps going further further back up in here getting narrower and narrower and a little less maintained further and further up into the Holy Ghost and I'm really uh, eager to see what's what we're gonna find at the end of this road what what amazing destination lies at the end of this this old road here that obviously uh, this canyon uh, Holy Ghost Canyon was a lot more populated than I ever thought and it's the Holy Ghost campground this must be what lies at the end of the road let's get a better look at that map I can't see it very well can you and I guess I'll just take you on a quick tour of the Holy Ghost campground since we're here Holy Ghost campground stop pay here fees overnight camping and day use self-service pay station vehicle site fee is eight dollars per night Vehicle day use is $8, extra vehicle fee of $8, $4 access or a senior citizen pass. Looks like there are some pretty nice facilities here. On cap campground, I don't see a lot of trash anywhere. Pretty crowded though. A lot of people out here. Uh, I don't know, I guess, you know, maybe it's a, a fairly safe activity during a pandemic, but it seems to me like it would be better to stay home, uh, regardless, these people seem to be, I don't see anyone wearing masks. Look like they're just having a good old time. some more elaborate camper style parking going uh, camping going on over here it's all wide open gosh look at all the cars There's a couple of hikers with their dog coming down the road here they don't seem to be too concerned no mask on their dog. This campground seems to just keep going back further and further and further. Okay, this has got to be the last little loop here of the campground. All vehicles must pay. Wow. It's beautiful up here, but it sure is crowded. I don't know. I think I'd be afraid to camp up here in a place like this with so many people around all right and that was your tour of the Holy Ghost campground I hope you enjoyed that we're gonna head on back down now to the bridge I'll show you where I waited for the bus and then we'll go up to Torero and check out the Torero general store see what that looks like nowadays 
some of the spreads up here are pretty elaborate and uh, one of them I just noticed has this very elaborate chain link fence that must be incredibly long to go all the way around the property with uh, barbed wire on top very very fancy fence so uh, this guy is pretty serious about keeping people off his property and if you look uh, I can't do it right now while I'm driving but down there into the valley uh, you see some pretty elaborate buildings down there I don't know why but ever since the pandemic hit we have seen just multitudes of Texas plates in New Mexico uh, it's really weird and most of us don't appreciate it much because it seems to us um, from our cultural perspective that they're not very careful when it comes to pandemic practices uh, we see them walking around without masks and uh, we see them driving like idiots and ha, I guess that's common I mean wherever you go it, if you don't uh, if you don't know the area you're gonna seem like you're driving like an idiot uh, I don't have anything against Texans I lived in Texas for a year myself uh, in Austin I guess that doesn't really count as part of Texas but um, uh, but no I mean I don't have anything against Texans but uh, <clears throat> There sure have been a lot of them here since the pandemic hit. Yeah, this is the Holy Ghost. Uh, looking over dead ahead at that ridge, I don't know if you can see through the trees very well, but uh, you, if you can, you can see a lot of damage, fire damage to that hillside. Um, it's pretty bare. Uh, there, aren't a lot of, there aren't a lot of trees left on it. There, you can get a better idea looking at it now. See how uh, most of the trees been burned up, and they're all, you know, a lot of them are laying flat. There you go. I had to stop so you can really see the extent. That all used to be forested, and now it's just leftover. Uh, leftover timber okay I'm gonna hop out of the truck and show you guys some of these cabins around here I think that most of these old cabins uh, were old hunting cabins or you know vacation cabins that people didn't really live in most of the time when I was a kid because it was just such rough country back then. Uh, people probably, hunters might have owned them and, and then used them in the summertime is probably all I can think of. This one's really uh, kind of traditional style -y. It's been fixed up. You can see the old path going up to the door right here. Here's another one here pretty fancy it's been all fixed up and I know uh, somebody's been using it as a vacation rental because it has out-of-state plates in the driveway okay so you've heard people say you know oh when I was a kid I had to walk a mile to catch the bus and in, in the snow and this and that well with me it was true except that uh, not only did I have to walk through the snow, uh, but it's freezing cold. Um, and I think I remember having to do it alone a couple of times, although I probably most of the time my older sister was with me. But uh, I'm at uh, the place where the cabin was that I showed you where I lived. And so now I'm going to drive from here to where I caught the bus. Now to me, as you know, a, a five-year-old or whatever I was kindergartner it must have seen like forever but let's see how far it actually is here we go okay this is where the cabin is where I started now this road was all just dirt back then sometimes we couldn't make it up the road if it, if it was really bad usually we could 
if we couldn't, it was no big deal, we would just park uh, near the main road and then hike our groceries in. Uh, and a couple of times we just had to leave our, our Volkswagen right in the middle of the road because, you know, we couldn't move it anywhere. Uh, you get stuck and you just leave the car there and, uh, and then walk the rest of the way with the groceries. And this is the way I would have walked to catch the bus to go to kindergarten. You know, even now, in my older and wizened uh, years, it seems like a pretty good distance. Um, it's not really. I mean, we haven't traveled, you know, even a quarter mile yet, but... Uh, I don't remember there being a bridge, but I guess there had to have been one. Or two, because obviously there's another one right here, so we have to cross the river twice. This is probably around here is probably where we usually got stuck with the V-dub. imagine it was just back there a little ways where mom ambushed us with the fur pretending to be a bear and at last see that bridge right there that would have been the site that tells me I'd made it all the way to where I got to catch the bus because that is exactly where I caught the bus right there right where that bridge met this dirt road And the bridge is no longer used uh, for traffic, but at the time, the bridge seemed huge to me, and looking at it now, it doesn't look like anything that impressive. Okay, we're on our way up to Cowles to see where uh, my mom uh, delivered her first uh, child, did her first home birth. Some of these people come in the other direction are a little bit careless. Um, it's a really narrow road and uh, the, the turns are pretty sharp and it's you know hard to see who's coming. And they're, they're driving pretty fast. And it ain't gonna hurt my car if we collide. Uh, this old Dodge truck can sustain a few scratches, no problem. But most of these people are in pretty fancy vehicles. <laughs> Cowles is even deeper into the heart of the Pecos wilderness. The deepest, darkest part of the Pecos wilderness. Further still, into the Pecos wilderness we go. Deeper and deeper. Good Lord, I don't remember it being this far. I hope I brought enough gas. As you can see, the road is quite narrow. Okay, we made it to Cowles. Which looks like it's turned into a pretty hot fishing spot. There's so many people here trying to catch fish. Uh, I seriously doubt they're gonna have any luck. I mean, there's people casting over people, casting over people. 
Uh, it just can't be that many fish in the river. I'm sure they're having fun though. As we go down the mountain here, there's actually uh, some pretty nice views. The sky is really beautiful right now, too. I hope we do get some rain. I don't know if you can hear me when the AC is on. Like here, pretty good view right there. I'd hate to be the guy <clears throat> that goes off the road here to the right because it's a pretty sheer drop. Pretty steep mountainside. I forgot to mention that uh, there was this proposal to put this huge mine in here, uh, the Torero mine, and uh, a lot of locals are opposing it. Some people approve of it. Uh, um, but I think that's what we're looking at here on our left, this this chain link, uh, this fenced off area is probably where they're planning to put the mine. And even though there was a lot of opposition to it, I think it's going through anyway. This wilderness is mighty and wild. Look at all the trees that burned off that mountain over there. Nothing left but looks like little toothpicks sticking up along the ridge. Sure feels like it might rain. We don't have to worry about forest fires out here that much because there's not really that much left to burn. And at last we're getting a few drops of rain, which is pretty pleasant. Hopefully it'll turn into a big rainstorm, but at the moment I'm just getting a few drops of rain on my windshield here and there. I stopped at the El Macho Church here in Pecos and there's this car from Texas here uh, and some ladies got out of the car with a shovel. I'm really wondering what she's going to do with it. Uh, it looks like she's waiting for me to leave so she can do whatever it was she planned to do <laughs> with the shovel. I'm just going to hang around for a few minutes. I could see they were placing a wreath and it looked like a kind of a private solemn occasion so I decided just to gracefully back out of there uh, but it was actually kind of beautiful uh, kind of a beautiful scene uh, to see uh, 
these people honoring their departed loved one who uh, obviously meant a lot to them. They say if you don't like the weather in New Mexico, just wait 10 minutes. And that's true. Uh, right now the road's wet. Uh, you can see it was raining here just minutes ago. Probably pretty hard. Uh, but right now it's sunny. And this road might be bone dry in another 15, 20 minutes. And as we come down the mountain here, uh, we might see patches of road that are bone dry and then come around and turn and, and see an area where it's totally wet. So it's kind of unpredictable exactly where the rain's going to fall and exactly when and exactly for how long. But it's never long enough. We always need more rain. Get warm up here. Anyway, I think that's about it. Uh, I'm going to head back towards town. If we see anything interesting, we'll stop. But uh, this has been pretty much your adventure of the Pecos Wilderness. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate it. Um, in these crazy COVID-19 pandemic times it's hard to stay away from each other socially but i think it's really important that we do and um i uh, think of this as a way of socializing thanks for hanging out with me see you in the next video